Hello everyone, welcome back to another video of LWSU interview preparation series. In previous videos of this series, we have covered almost all the interview questions which can be asked into LWSU interviews. So please watch my previous videos as well. Those will be very helpful for you to crack LWC interviews. Alright, so today in this video, we will cover basic JavaScript questions. Those are often asked into LWC interviews. Though we won't go into the deep JavaScript questions, we will only touch questions those are mainly asked into LWC interviews. And if you want me to cover any other specific topic or question, then please do let me know in the comments. I will include them into future videos. So let's start with today's first question. That is, what is ECMAScript? So this is a very important question for every JavaScript developer or who is working on any JavaScript framework like Angular, LWC, React. So let's see how we can answer this question. So we can say ICMA International is a company that creates all the standards for some scripting languages including JScript, ActionScript and JavaScript. So if we talk about the history of JavaScript, then we can say in 1995, Netscape Communication developed and used JavaScript in their Netscape browser. And because of the JavaScript, that browser became more popular quickly. And after that, all the competitors also developed their own scripting language. Uh, like Microsoft developed JScript for the Internet Explorer. So at that time, multiple scripting languages were developed as per the browser. So this was the biggest problem for the clients and the developers. Because if they want to create a new website, then they have to choose only one browser. And in another browser, that website will not work. Like if you have developed a website for Internet Explorer in JScript, then that will not work in the Netscape because Netscape doesn't support JScript. Netscape support JavaScript, right? And in 1996, Netscape gave their JavaScript to ICMA International to build standards so they can be used in all the scripting languages and in 1997 first version of ICMA script was released by the ICMA international with ICMA 262 name and now we can say ICMA script is the centralized client side scripting standards which is followed by all the browsers and scripting languages like javascript and jscript and in another words we can say ICMA script is a standard and JavaScript is the implementation of the ECMAScript standard. Okay. Next we have, which is the latest version of ECMAScript? Then we can say ES 2022 or ES 13 is the latest version as of now when I am recording this video. And if we talk about the major release version, then that was ES 6 and released in 2015. And ES 6 was released after a long time, but with lots of good features. And after this, ECMAScript introduced new version every year. Okay. Next we have, what are the latest features of ECMAScript? So let's discuss about few important features. And first we have variable scoping. This was introduced in ES6 with two new keywords, let and const. And we will discuss about them in coming slides. And next we have arrow functions, spread operator, template literals, default values for function parameters, classes, modules, and async and await. And about many of these we will discuss in coming slides. Though there are lots of features introduced in recent releases, but I have covered only few most important. Okay. Next we have, what is the difference between let, war, and const in JavaScript? So we can see, all of these are used to declare variables in JavaScript. And before ES6, var was the only way to declare variables and constant in JavaScript. But there were few problems with var related to scope. So let's discuss about them. So the first problem is, the scope of var is not limited to the block in which it defines. It is limited to function. So let me show you here in the example. So here we have a function demo and in if condition we have a title variable declared with var. And if you see here in the console, 
I'm using this title variable over here out of the if condition. It means out of the block where we have declared this variable. Now if you'll see the output, then you can see this is working out of scope as well. So due to this nature of war, we can get into the errors in real time applications. And if you declare a global variable with war, then that variable will directly get added with the window object. And that is a common object for whole DOM. So if we have a variable with the same name in multiple libraries, in that case, this will be a biggest problem for us because both libraries will refer the same variable. And if value gets changed from one library, then same value will be available for another as well. So that's why latent const was introduced in ES6 to avoid these kind of scope related issues because latent const are limited to the current block where they are declared. So if you can see here, we have the same example that we have seen with the var, but now we have replaced the var with the let. And now if you are trying to access that variable out of the block, then you can see we are getting the undefined error over here. And if we have declared a global variable with let, that will also not add with the window object. Okay. So we can say let is used to create local variables and const is used to create local constants. Next we have what is the difference between double equals and triple equals. So generally we use these operators to compare the values of two variables. So when we are using double equals operator or we can say equality operator, then interpreter implicitly try to convert the values before comparing. This means values will be converted into the same data type before comparison. And in triple equals operator or we can say identity operator, values does not convert into the same data type before comparison. So we can say with double equals operator, data types of variable will doesn't matter. And if we are comparing variables with triple equals operator, then data type does matter. Okay. So let's see here in the example. So here if you can see with the first use case, here we have 0 equals equals false. We are using double equals over here and we will get true from here because data type doesn't matter and technically 0 is also false. And if you can see in the second example, here we have used 3 equals, then output will be false because both values are in the different data type, 0 in the integer and false in the boolean. And if you can see in the third example, 1 equals equals string 1. It will be true because as we have seen in double equals data type will automatically get converted. So at the end comparison will be 1 equals equals 1. So the output will be true and same rule will be applied to the all the examples. Okay. So in nutshell, if you want to compare only values without caring of data type, then we should use double equals else we should use triple equals. And next we have what is the difference between event bubbling and event capturing in JavaScript? Then we can say event bubbling and event capturing are two ways of event propagation in the HTML DOM API. Propagation means in what order events will be called. For example, let's say we have two elements, parent and child, and we have attached an event handler with both of the elements, let's say on click event. Now when we click on this child element, then event handler for both element will be executed. Now the question is in which order event will be executed because we have attached event on both parent and child elements. So to define event calling order, we have two ways, event bubbling and capturing. And if we talk about event bubbling, then we can say order will be bottom to top means this child event handler will call first, then parent handler will call and so on. And in capturing, order will be top to bottom. Means parent event handler will call first, then child event handler will call and so on. And the default behavior is event bubbling. But if you want to use capturing, then you need to pass use capture parameter as true while registering event. Like this over here, if you can see in this image, so if we'll pass true from here, in that case, parent event handler will call first, then child event handler will call and order will be parent to child. Next we have, what is the difference between 
event dot stop propagation and event dot prevent defaults so if we talk about event dot prevent defaults then we can say it prevents the default action of the browser max on the event for example if you can see here this is the code to restrict mouse right click behavior like after adding this code if you'll right click from the mouse you won't be able to see any context menu over there like what i have done over here i have created a context menu event handler so this will call when when i will right click from the mouse and in this event handler i have written e dot prevent defaults now what it will do it will prevent the default behavior of that right click it means now context menus will not open there so we can say to prevent default action of event we can use e dot prevent defaults and next we have event dot stop propagation so we can say it prevents further propagation of current event in the capturing and bubbling phase so if you will see here we have parent and child elements and let's say we have registered click event on both and when you will click on child element then parent event handler will also get called as we have discussed in last slide but now let's say you want to break this behavior i mean you don't want to call parent event handler on child click in that case you need to use event dot stop propagation in child event so if you can see over here in this image i have created a event handler for child element and over here i have used event dot stop propagation now what it will do it will prevent parent event handlers to get called means only this child event handler get called not parent event handlers in this case and apart from these one more option we have that is event dot stop immediate propagation that will helpful when we have register same event multiple time on same element for example we have a button and we have registered on click event multiple times and now we want only one handler to get called in that case we can use event dot stop immediate propagation it will prevent all other handlers to get called okay so we can say event dot stop propagation will prevent parent handlers to get called and event dot stop immediate propagation will prevent other handlers to get called next we have what is shadow dom okay so before looking into shadow dom we need to understand what is dom so we can say dom stands for document object model and it is the in memory representation of our html in the form of object and dom is just like node tree of our html and it is used by browser to determine what to render on the page so let me show you how dom looks like in browser so let me open my browser and here i have google.com open now if i will do inspect so in the element section so here you can see dom tree so whatever html we write in our component or page that get converted into tree format so our browser can render that as a user interface and there are bunch of methods available to manipulate dom and these methods are the part of dom api for example if you want to select any element then you can use document dot query selector so let me show you here if i'll write document and let me type body here so you can see whole body is here now so with the help of dom api methods we can manipulate our dom okay now if we talk about shadow dom then we can say shadow dom is the dom inside dom and it encapsulate dom from rest of the web page so css and javascript can be specified to a widget and not to whole page because shadow dom will create a shadow boundary on top of all the elements so whatever css and javascript we have out of that boundary that will not impact our component and whatever css and javascript we have defined inside shadow dom that will also not impact rest of the dom and if we talk about lwc components then those are also rendered inside shadow dom that's why our css and javascript events are limited to that component only and custom events also doesn't propagate through shadow dom boundary it means whatever custom events we are firing from our component those are also limited to the shadow boundary and if you want to allow a custom event to travel through a shadow dom boundary 
then we need to pass bubbles and composed properties as a true with custom event so in nut cell we can say shadow dom encapsulate our components so whatever css and javascript we write in that component that will not impact whole dom and because of shadow boundary inner content will also not get affected from outer css and javascript okay next we have what are import and export in lwc so these features are not belongs to lwc these are introduced with es6 and with the help of these features we can share our javascript code among multiple components so let's say you want to write a method or property that will be used at multiple places then you can create a javascript module and with the help of import and export you can serve that same code at multiple places so we can say export is helpful to make a function or property available to use outside of module so this is an example like how you can export a function or property so here i have some method and if i want to expose this method to use into another component then what i need to do i just need to export it like this okay and this is how you can import that method into another component so if you can see here on the line number 2 i have just imported that some method and i have used over here on line number 7 okay next we have what is utility module and how we can create it then we can say a utility module is a reusable component which do not have html file and we can use this module to share code among multiple components so to create what you need to do you need to create a simple component then you need to delete the html file and after that in js file you need to have your all the common methods from there you can export those methods with the help of export keyword and you can import those methods wherever you want with the help of import keyword and i have already created a video in which i have explained in detail like how you can create an huge utility module there i have created a toast message utility so from that single place you can show toast message in the all components so if you want to learn that then please check out that video and you can find link in the description next we have what is spread operator in javascript this is an another very good feature of javascript that was also introduced in es6 and we can use spread operator in many ways in javascript so let's check one by one so first we have when we want to convert our array into individual elements so if you can see in this example we have a array arr and now if i want to expand this array then what i can do i can just add these three dots over here so these three dots are the identifier of spread operator so if you'll see the output of this console then you can see array is converted into the string so whenever we want to convert our array into the individual elements then we can use spread operator next use case we have merge array or object so if you can see in this image i have two arrays array 1 and array 2 so if you can see over here in the first item of array 2 i have just used three dot with arr1 this means arr1 will be merged into the arr2 so if you'll see in the output so here you can see items from both arrays okay next use case we have deep cloning so cloning means whenever you are going to assign your object into another variable then reference will be same for both variables so whenever you will change anything in the variable 1 then that modification will also happen in the variable 2 because they are referring same memory address so if you want to break this behavior in that case you need to do deep cloning in deep cloning variables will get different different memories so if you can see in this example over here i have a variable obj original and now if i am going to create duplicate of this obj original then i can use three dot and name of the variable so here spread operator is doing deep cloning deep cloning means if i will change the name of obj original in that case that will not make impact on obj cloned because now they are referring different different memory next we have rest parameter so for example you are working on a common method and that method can be called from multiple places and input parameters also can be multiple but you don't know like how many input parameters will be there in that case what you can do you can define input parameter with the three dots means with the spread operator so if you can see in this example i have a func function and i am taking arguments over here with the spread operator now you can see over here i can call this method and i can pass n numbers of parameter from here so if you want to make a method with dynamic input parameters 
in that case also you can use spread operator okay next we have what are template literals in javascript this is also introduced with es6 and very very helpful when working with strings and we can see it provides a easy way to create multi line string and perform string interpolation earlier we had only string literals but when we need to do some formatting with string like if you can see in this image so if i want to print this kind of string then with string literals we need to write it like this but it is not looking so good and not in clean readable format but if we use template literal instead of string literal then you can see we have a simple and clean code and template literals are enclosed by back tick character and help us to write clean code and another use case is when you want to add dynamic variable values with string then in string literal we need to write code like this but if you use template literal then we can use expression with the string so if you'll see over here in the left part we have added plus plus to add dynamic variables but if you'll see in the right part with the template literal we don't need to add plus plus over here instead of that we can use dollar and curly braces so we can say template literals are very helpful when we are working with strings okay next we have what is null is coalescing operator in javascript so this is the official mdn definition of null is coalescing operator what does it say it says a logical operator that returns its right hand side operand when its left hand side operand is null or undefined otherwise return the left hand side operand so let's understand with example so here we have a variable amount and for the testing purpose i have just assigned the null value and when i'm going to print it then i want to print zero when we have amount null or undefined so how you can write this one after adding the amount variable you can just add double question mark and whatever value you want when amount will be null or undefined so i have used zero over here so in the output you will find zero and in another example i have assigned value 10 and now with the same code i will find 10 what does it means it means left side variable value if null or undefined in that case it will print right side value else it will return left side value okay next we have what are promises in javascript then we can say promises are used to handle asynchronous operations in javascript and prior to promises event and callback functions were used but with multiple requests they will create callback hell and promises are easy to manage with dealing with multiple asynchronous operations and what is callback hell callback hell means we are writing callback into another callback and this can be for multiple request and if you have written multiple callbacks into callbacks then this is called callback hell and in lwc generally we are using promises when we are trying to call apex method with imperative approach and a promise has four states fulfill rejected pending and settled fulfill means promise has been succeed rejected means promise has been failed pending means promise is still in pending mode and settled means promise has been fulfilled or rejected okay so that's it for this video in next video i will cover some scenario based lwc interview questions and if you want me to cover any other questions as well then please do let me know in the comments or you can reach out me on email that you can find in description and please like this video and subscribe my youtube channel and thank you for watching this video i will see you in next video